Hey guys, welcome back to week three of Kids Church. And I have a Nopa with me. How are you? I am good, thank you. Thanks for asking. I'm very good. How are you guys doing? We good. hope you're good. We hope yeah. you're good. So, yeah, what's the theme? What's the main you point? You don't know the theme? I forgot. I totally forgot. It's Abraham blessed to be a blessing. Oh, yeah. Now okay. you remember. Now I remember, yeah. And today we'll be learning about how we are blessed when we pray for others. Now, Anopa, have you ever been blessed whenever you've prayed for someone? Oh, yeah. I've got a story. So, once upon a time, mm. I had a best friend, right? Right. His name was Brent. And he never really used to come to church, right? Sure. So, I was like, God, please just, you know, let him come to church one time or just, you know, just come, right? Mm -hmm. And he came. He came. He came, yeah. And guys, that's what happens when we pray for others, they come to church. So, why can't you? And now, we'll be headed into worship. <laughs>
Have you been practicing the memory verse? I have! Have you guys been practicing the memory verse? Okay, awesome. Should we go through it and sing it together? Yes, please. But I have another twist. Oh. I think we should add in a march. Oh. Okay, so you're gonna stomp with your arms and legs, and we're gonna go. God said to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And all the families on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12 verse 2 to 3. Genesis 12 verse 2 to 3. Okay, but we have to try it faster. Oh, oh. Because I'm getting super excited. Okay, okay. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, and... God said to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And all the families on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12 verse 2 to 3. Genesis 12 verse 2 to 3. <gasps> Yay, you faith, that was so much fun. Yay, thank you so much. I love learning memory verses, don't you? I love it too. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. But now, I think you need to go tell your friends about your remix version of the Father Abraham song. Don't you, Faith? Yeah. I've got so many people to tell. All right, guys, we're going to go tell some people. We'll see you soon. Let's go, Faith. Come. Woo. Hi there, boys and girls. We've been learning about Abraham and how Abraham was blessed so that he could bless others. Do you remember the ones that we've learned in the series so far? We've learned that we are blessed when we obey, that we are blessed when we are generous, and today we're going to learn that we are blessed when we pray for others. And next week, you're going to learn that we are blessed when we believe God. So how can we be blessed when we pray for others? And it's an amazing thing that happens when we pray for other people, they are helped, but we also get to celebrate and rejoice that the people that we love are getting blessed too. Now I need to read you an interesting Bible verse from Psalm 145 verse 20. It says, the Lord protects those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. So the good news is that there is a promise that God protects us because we love him, right? But there is also a warning because the Bible has promises and warnings and it says God destroys the wicked. And today's story is about a very sad time when God destroyed the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were very wicked cities. And God went to Abraham and he said to him, I want to tell you about a plan that I need to put into place. He said, I've heard from the people living around that the people in Sodom and Gomorrah are wicked and they are doing terrible things. They didn't protect children. The families were not being upheld. And God knew that there was great wickedness and sin in the city. And God knew that he needed to destroy the city so that they wouldn't hurt more people because wicked people who are sinning hurt other people. And then Abraham said to God, but there's a problem. My nephew Lot lives in Sodom and Gomorrah. What about him? What, what if there's other people that love you and that are righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah? Surely you won't destroy the whole city if there are some righteous people there. And then Abraham and God had a very interesting conversation. Some people talk about this conversation as a kind of a bargaining or negotiating or even interceding. Because Abraham said, if there are 50 people, please will you spare the city? And God said to Abraham, if there were 50 people, then I wouldn't destroy the city. And so Abraham realized there weren't even 50. And then he bargained. He said, what if there's 45? And God said, if there's 45, I'll spare the whole city for 45 righteous people. And Abraham thought, can I ask some more? He said, what if there's 40 people? And God said, for 40 people, I'll hold back my destruction. Abraham was getting a bit desperate. He said, what if there's 30 people? Will you still save the city? God said, if there's 30, I'll save the whole city. God and Abraham were having this conversation and Abraham tried again. He said, what if there's 20? God said, even if there's only 20, I'll save the whole city. And then he asked one last time. He said, what if there's 10 righteous people? Can't you save the whole city for 10 righteous people? 
And God said, if there were 10, I would have saved the whole city. But there's not even 10 there. Instead, he put a rescue plan in place. He sent two angels to go to Lot. And Lot and his wife and his two daughters, they got the news from the angels that told them that they needed to get out of the city because God was going to destroy the city. In Psalm 145 verse 20, it says, the Lord protects those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. And so God went to protect Lot, just like Abraham had asked. He asked God to protect the righteous people who love God. Now, an interesting thing happened because I think about it, if I were Lot, I would have got out of that city super quick. But Lot didn't. He took his time. He sent some messages to his daughter's fiancés. He said to them, we need to leave the city. But they didn't believe him. They didn't want to come with. And so Lot waited and waited until eventually the angels got so desperate and anxious, they said, quickly, hurry, the destruction is coming. We've got to get out of the city. And so he helped them. The angels helped them carry their bags and they raced out of the city. And then the angels gave them another important instruction. He said, as you leave the city, don't look back. And I think sometimes for us, when we leave things and places where there's wrongdoing, we shouldn't look back. We shouldn't want to look back at those wrong things. But Lot's wife didn't listen. As they were leaving the city, she looked back. I wonder what she was thinking. Maybe she was thinking that she left something at home. Or maybe she was worried about somebody that she knew in the city. I don't know. But she didn't obey God's instruction. And a terrible thing happened. She turned into a pillar of salt. Can you imagine salt? There was the statue of Lot's wife made out of salt. And so Lot and his two daughters were saved. They were rescued from the city. They obeyed God. They left the city that was going to be destroyed. And they were saved because God listens to our prayers and God protects the righteous. This is what it says. In Genesis 19 verse 29, it said, God listened to Abraham's request and he kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities in the plain. And I want you to know that God says he will watch over us. He will look after us. I want to ask one more hard question though. Sometimes there are things that go wrong. And we mustn't confuse the destruction and judgment that God brings on the wicked with natural disasters. There are some natural disasters that happen for various reasons. And we shouldn't judge other people just because there are other natural disasters that go on. Maybe there's a flood or maybe there's a, an earthquake. That's not the kind of judgment that we're talking about for Sodom and Gomorrah. It says that the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, the whole city was destroyed as an act of judgment. And that's different to natural disasters. And we know that God says there will come a day when he will judge the whole earth. And for that reason, we need to pray. Pray for our friends and families. Pray that God will keep them safe. Pray that God will keep us away from places where there is wickedness and wrongdoing. And we need to help one another. Help one another by praying for one another and by encouraging each other. So I want to encourage you today to take a moment and pray for your friends and family. Pray that we will all listen to God's voice and that we will obey him. Remember, we are blessed when we obey. And let's thank him for his safety and his protection that we don't have to worry about God's judgment for wickedness when we love him and we follow what he gives us to do. All right. Hello, kids. We are here for week three of Blessed to be a Blessing. And guess what? We're back again for another activity. The name is Hula Hoop Pass. All right, so we have two teams and they need to pass a hula hoop from one person to another all around the circle. Back to the first person. Once that is completed, they can sit down, all right? Try this at home. Let's see how far you get with it. Let's go! Okay! Willy Wonka Wally Waffles, are you ready? Alright! Five Musketeers, are you ready? Okay, in three, two, one, let's go! 
Wow, the five musketeers are moving quickly, eh? Hey? Willy Wonka waffles, you falling behind. Whoa, Willy Wonka waffles are ahead. They are ahead. Let's go. Oh, the chain is breaking. It has to go over fully. All right, then we have a winner. Let's go, five musketeers, you guys won. All right, the activity is done. Let's go on to some questions.